So a couple was driving down the road, and as the wife looked over at her husband behind the wheel, she said, Honey, remember when we were young and we'd be in the car and how I'd slide over and we'd just sit snuggled up next to each other? And he looked at her with a smile and said, Well, I haven't moved. <laughs> We've all put a lot of miles on with God, haven't we? All of us have some more than others, right? And there isn't anyone in this church that doesn't have a relationship with God. None of us. We all do. But there probably isn't anyone in the church also that has, hasn't had that sense at times that God feels distant or that that relationship has kind of lost something, that it isn't what it once was, or that we wish for a closeness with God that, we, that we've never had. The people of Israel also had that relationship with God, and it was a, an intimate, a close relationship. But now, as we find this setting, they are in their second generation of exile, away from the city of Jerusalem, apart from the temple that they once knew so well. Jerusalem was only a memory, handed on now only by the elders of memory to the younger members of the tribe. So perhaps it was natural over all that time that a distance had grown from God. Or maybe it was the guilt of their infidelities along the way. Maybe it was the fact that for countless generations, God had promised them a Messiah, and the Messiah had yet, yet come. It seemed like forever, and waiting forever kind of dulls the passion. So they wandered. Their hearts were hardened. They were no longer quite as eager and ready to hope as they once had. A lot had happened since the days of the, of the uh, quaking mountains and the awesome deeds. And I don't know, just routine and sin had kind of darkened those days and a distance had grown. But Isaiah was there to remind them that God was there and always had been. If only the heavens would be rent and he would just come down and let them know. But he knew and he reminded them that the very hands of God that had formed them were still there at work. The promise of God had not left. God had not moved. And our lives are not all that different than the Israelites, are they? They're... It's been a long time since Jesus said, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. In fact, for the, it didn't take long for the early church to realize that, wow, this might take a while. It was not happening right away. This was going to be a journey. It would take time. They would have to wait, and so they waited. And when you wait, it's pretty easy to lose that intensity of the promise. It was pretty easy to lose the passion of those days. It's pretty easy to forget. But they learned, as we do, the relationship with God cannot be measured in immediacy because immediacy has a way of distorting reality. And it can't be measured in intensity because that kind of intensity is just not good for longevity. And it can't be kept alive by being at panic in every corner because panic produces irrational behavior. A relationship with God is true like any other relationship with beloved in our lives. It's held together with time. Time. The Jews learned it. The early Christian church learns it. And we learn it. And that's exactly what Advent attempts to teach us calls us to, the passing of the time, the watchful waiting. And it reminds us who we are waiting for and the promises that surround that waiting. It reminds us of a passion that can be rekindled and a hope that hasn't reached its fulfillment. And that we're a project that are, is, are not yet finished. Advent reminds us that maybe it would be good to just slide over and sit close because God hasn't moved.